This is Mikey Rotella. I'm here at Distortions for Monster Lab, and I'm in the Monster Lab making a little monster guy. Uh, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about uh, tools and clay. I think the um, the best tool that you have as a sculptor, especially in the early stage of uh, of blocking out a sculpture, is your hands. So you know you're putting clay on and making your hand into in, into a little kind of a rake shape and just kind of pulling it around. And that you know most of the sculpture can be done you know just with your hands rolling little little noodles or little boogers and just putting them in different spots. Um, but when you have to, you know, there's certain tools that, that kind of help you out in different things. Like, uh, you know, this little uh, crazy wire that you would probably use in the mafia to choke somebody. Uh, you can just cut little chunks out of your clay, you know, whatever, whatever shapes you need or, or whatever. It just makes it, makes it easy to kind of get the clay, you know, even and out there. Um, some other sh little little tools and stuff that, that are, are good for, for blocking out are um, tools like this. This is a, a, a big, big, you know, size rake. And it's got these, it's like a ribbon of, of, of metal. And it's got these little, you know, notches worked into it that um, make it like a rake. You have this kind of uh, like a grid pattern shape that you just rake over the forms of, of your sculpture. And um, as, you, as you can see, what it does is it takes clay from the high points and puts it in the low points. It fills the low points. So it's really evening out the surface of, of the clay. Now, um, the shape is round, which is nice, because you can like, really move around the, the, the round forms of, of your sculpture. But um, if you look, there are different kinds of rakes. For instance, this one is a similar size, um, but it's a different shape. It's got a more of a, a flat, you know, triangle to it. So it's a similar concept, it's just a little harsher. You know, this, this has much deeper grooves in the rake. And, um, but these are still the uh, same size. So at this point in your sculpture, you know, th this size rake is, is really good for finding those forms. Now, if you look, rakes and, and the shapes of, of rakes stay the same. And the shapes of really all your, your sculpture tools pretty much stay the same. They just get, they, they differ in size. So I have a tiny little rake here, which, you know, would, would be used for kind of rounding out smaller forms. Like if I had a big, big wrinkle here, you know, it doesn't really make sense for this sculpture, but just to show you guys, you know, I can, I can use this tinier rake, which is still making those, those little tiny rake marks, but just on a smaller scale to, to soften up the smaller forms. And then there are different types of rakes, like, like this is made of a guitar string. Whereas this one is made out of um, a saw blade, like a scroll saw or a band saw blade. Uh, this one is a, is a guitar string, actually a bass guitar string. And it's for just a different type of raking, but it's the same basic principle with every rake. And as you can see, you know, a lot of them are, are similar shapes, just different scales, similar shapes, different scales. That also works with uh, some of your loop tools, which are, you know, this, this similar to rakes, they just don't, don't have those grooves in them. They're just, you know, different shapes and, and loops. As you can see, we have the same round shape, you know, for making small little round wrinkle shapes and stuff. And then you have one that's just a little bigger. It's making just different size, um, different sizes of, of the same shape pretty much. And uh, on this side, we have this little triangle kind of arrowhead looking tool which is really good for getting, you know, tighter, little wrinkly shapes and, and stuff like that. More for detailing and, uh, and finding, finding the, you know, the area and forms of, of different stuff. Here's another example of a similar tool, just pretty much the same shape, just a different size, you know, a different grade wire. And you can get in there and do much finer, you know, tiny little details and stuff like that. So you just kind of use those all the same. If you look at this tool in particular, it also has a really nice kind of spatula spoon weird round shape on one end made of wood and uh, it's machined and filed down you know to be that, that nice shape flat on one side round on the other 
And uh, this shape is actually really valuable too. It repeats in, in other different tools. This is a, a dental tool with a very similar shape to that. And you know, it's just a different size, a different type of tool. So you can do the same basic thing, finding forms and, and shapes you know, with, with that little spatula, but you can also do it you know, on a different scale with this one. So your, your tools are usually the same thing, just repeating you know, different sizes and different types of tools. Um, here's another version of a rake that's really uh, interesting and, and cool, and you can find these at, at any art store, in, you know, anywhere. It's just a little wooden, little dowel with a flat kind of rakey end on it. It has these little kind of grooves, you know, in it, and you can use that the same way as a rake. Just rake over your forms, and, you know, this works, because it's a little smaller, it works for nice small forms. And on the other side, it just has similar shape without the grooves so you can just get in there and clean it up a little bit here and there find the inside of your wrinkle and and just clean it up from in there also i'd like to mention just for bigger stuff you know i i use this steak knife as a rake i mean these these serrated you know edges of the blade here actually work to to you know give you that a kind of similar pattern that evens out all those surfaces you see, all, all those grooves that I, I carved in with the other tools are gone, and all I had to do is just pull the clay from one part to the next over those, those deep recessed areas, and it just kind of spackles it right up. And uh, just when something's big like this, this is a nice tool to kind of just move the clay around and, and find the shapes really quickly. Obviously, it's not a refining tool, but for you know, the, the point where, that we're at, you, know, you can really do some, some cool stuff. And if you have a big chunk of, of a shape that you don't want, you know, you just get in there and just slice it off. It, it's, it's pretty handy, you know? And if anybody messes with you, you can just stab them. So it's kind of cool. But those are some, you know, real basic tools. I mean, I have hundreds and hundreds of tools. I'm sure every artist has hundreds and hundreds of tools. Some that you use all the time, some that you don't really figure out till later on. But uh, those are pretty basic, and you can find most of them at any, you know, art store or, or sculpture uh, place. And uh, if you can't find them, they're pretty easy to make too. This one I made myself, this one I made, you know, just, just different stuff. You just, you know, pick up something at, at a, you know, on, online or something like that, and you can try to, to replicate it yourself, and then you never have to worry about getting another one. So it's kind of cool. Hope that helps with uh, sculpting tools.